the world tour. <laughs> Good to have him back. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Turn to Revelation 13 this morning, please. Make it 9, not 13. We're not going there first. 9. Revelation 9. All right. Father, Lord, I need the gift of teaching now. I need the gift of teaching. I need wisdom, Father, from the Word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Now, we've come a long way to the point that I'm going to reach this morning, and I want you just to kind of uh, take in what I've got to say, take it home, and meditate on it. That's the way I do anything. If uh, my nature is very simple, if someone gets up in front of me and tries to force me to believe something or, or convince me about something, you're wasting your time. I'll turn you off right then. But if you'll present the case to me and let me take it home and let me think about it and let me pray over it, and then in my spirit I begin to receive the truth from God that it's right, which I have many, many times down through the years, I will accept it. I will accept it. And a lot of these things that I'm teaching you in here this morning, I've been dealing with these things now for a long time. And I'm not expecting you just to take it, you know. This is what we believe at Temple. No, that, no, 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 no. I want, you to, I want you to take it and study it for yourself. Do your own research, run the references, and come to your own conclusions. This is why Paul said, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Let the Holy Ghost do that for you. And uh, don't, uh, that's one of the things wrong with our generation today. They're, they're brainwashed and spoon-fed. And they don't, know how to, they don't know how to do any analytical thinking on their own. And that's sad. That's, that's sad because they've been cursed for their whole lifetime. They have, to, they have to label everything, label it, and they follow labels. Revelation chapter 9, verse 1. The fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven to the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Now notice the earth and the pit. Notice that there is a bottomless pit associated with the earth. Now... Do I believe that there is underneath my feet, underneath this physical globe that I'm standing on, uh, that there's something down there? Absolutely. Amen. According to the scripture, there is. He descended into the heart of the earth. No question. The Lord Jesus did. He went down into the earth. So biblically, scripturally, there is something going on underneath our feet. Now, a few years back, they drilled a hole, a deep shaft in Siberia, and I forget where it was, but when they got down so far, they got down, I'm talking about miles down, some unbelievable distance. They heard these screams coming up out of it. And uh, it was said that uh, these were the screams coming up out of hell. Well, now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. You know, uh, you can, you know, If you try to do research into something like that, you'll find people take positions on either side. And uh, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, with, uh, with the final result of it. So I don't know. I don't know. I've got a tape that's uh, recorded screams from hell. You can find it all over the Internet. And uh, there's one thing's for certain, whether that's legit or not, there are screams coming up out of hell. No question about that. Now, when we go back to Nazi Germany in World War II, Nazi Germany before World War II, go back to 1933. That's when Adolf Hitler became the Chancellor of Germany, 1933. The same year, Franklin Delano Roosevelt became the president of the United States. So we have on one side of the Atlantic a man who became president, Franklin Roosevelt. On the other side of the Atlantic, we have a man who became chancellor of Germany in Adolf Hitler, 1933. These two men could not have been more unlike each other. They were definitely two different men. And uh, one was leading a, a free nation. The other one was leading a dictatorship. But the things that preceded... Adolf Hitler coming to power in Germany, uh, you have to dig a little bit. You have, to, you have to do a little research into it, do some reading, to find out just exactly what kind, of, uh, what kind of world was it that he came into. Now, remember, I told you last week that evolution, the fundamental uh, thesis of evolution is that, that, uh, that there is some kind of a force out here, some kind of an energy out here, that is actively engaged in things evolving. And obviously, something has got to be 
working at this, to get them to explain what it is, it's a different matter entirely. But something is happening. And that's why I told you last week, remember I told you about the flagellum. You have a motor. You have a motorboat inside your body along with a lot of other things. And it is a marvel of engineering when you look at it. And you ought to read some articles on that. You'd be amazed. And then where did that come from? How did that happen? Did that just mindlessly develop from nothing? You need your head examined. Something designed that. All right. Now, if you're a Christian and a Bible believer, you have no problem with this. You know God did it. He created. He's the creator. Brought into existence everything there is and by design, a purpose in it. But the evolutionist has to take a different, he has a different take on that. And this is where their weakness, this is, this is their greatest weakness. Because they, have, they, have, they must admit among themselves there's something going on, but they can't explain exactly what's doing this. But they observe evolution. Well, when Darwin wrote his theory, uh, theory of evolution back in the 1800s, uh, it opened the floodgates to a lot of speculation. All kinds of different branches began to, uh, of evolution began to approach this. You have biological evolution, social evolution, spiritual evolution. All these things began to take shape and were formed because they accepted the simple premise that everything is evolving. One of the things that evolved from that was eugenics. Eugenics is the idea that you can, by genetic ma manipulation, develop human beings into what you want them to be. You can breed out characteristics and breed in characteristics, and on and on and on it goes. And, it's, and then that falls into subcategories. It can get real complex. The fact of the matter is nothing's really simple. So the idea of eugenics was to develop a master race and breed out the sub-races. So it became a very racial thing, very racial, believe me, very racial. And when Margaret, Margaret Sanger started the uh, Planned Parenthood, she was dyed in the wool. She was a devotee. She was definitely part of the movement of her time where they were going to breed out and breed in and eliminate certain characteristics, certain races. And to this very day, I don't know that Planned Parenthood has ever made a public statement about Margaret Sanger. Be interesting, wouldn't it? Get hold of your local Planned Parenthood chapter and ask them, what is your position on Margaret Sanger? Do you still agree with her premise that uh, blah, 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 blah? Just ask them if, uh, you know, see what they say. But anyway, Hitler took that and merged it with the occult world, all right? He merged it with the spiritual side and began to set about to, to breed a master race and connected with what he called the Aryan. And he began to breed this master race. He had set up shops where the men and the women would, uh, would cohabit and produce children, forget marriage ceremonies, had nothing to do with it. They were called Liebensborn. And these kids are still alive today and children born of them. They were bred for that purpose. Now, on the surface of it, you think, well, this is a horrible thing. Well, of course it is. Anytime you get out of the, out of the order that God uh, established for the propagation of humanity, it gets into a problem, doesn't it? It gets into all kinds of trouble because people have a tendency to play God. Yeah. <coughs> and that's exactly what Hitler was doing. But in any event, the idea was that we're going to breed. We're going to make, we're going to raise humanity to a higher level. All right? That's what it's about. We're going to raise humanity to a higher level. We're going to do it through genetic engineering. We're going to do it through spiritual help. Now, you've got to go back to Germany before Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler did not introduce occultism to Germany. Here's the thing about the Germans. They are very thorough people. Very, very thorough people. And when they get into something, they, they exhaust it. They do every possible uh, test and structure and, and whatever. They exhaust it. And this is why today, if you someone tries to sell you German engineering, you want to buy it? Would you, which, which choice would you make, Chinese engineering or German engineering? All right. Answered the question. Of course. 
And uh, made in China is, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> stuff falling apart made in China. But anyway, the idea is that, that the German people, they take, the, they take the, the, the philosophy of the day and then they take it and then they improve upon it, whether it's occultism or whatever it is. They improve upon it, and that's what they did with the occult world and with eugenics, and they merged the two. Dietrich Eckhart was a, an occultist who had a direct hand in forming the Nazi party of Germany, Dietrich Eckhart. Remember that name. Dietrich Eckhart was, a, was, a, was an occultist, and he made this famous statement. He said, he said, Hitler will dance, but I call the shots. And this is to paraphrase him. He will dance, but I'm the one calling the shots. In plain words, Hitler is just a tool in our hands to do what we want to do. Now, one of the societies that existed during this time was the Vril Society, V-R-I-L. How many ever heard of the Vril Society? Well, good, a lot of you folks read. It's associated with Vrillians. It's associated with extraterrestrials, and it's associated with beings from under the earth. It's connected with an ancient Atlantis. It's connected with channeling or communicating with, with, uh, with this extraterrestrial spirits or the spirits of the dead or departed, those who have gone on. The Vril Society was started by one Maria Orsic. About 1919, 1920, somewhere in there, she started this. This woman was a channeler. This woman was a beautiful woman. If you want to do an inner, do the research it for me. Just do, I, I appreciate when people do this. Just type in Maria Orsic. She was a channeler. She would go into a trance. Her eyes would roll back in her head. All you could see is the white of her eyes. And she would begin to speak. Uh, something would speak through her like Chandler's do when she was connected with the other world or with the spirit world and what have you. The reason I'm bringing her up is because she had a profound effect upon the development of German technology. Notice carefully now where it's coming from. The effect on German technology is coming from an occult, an occultic channeler, a medium. Now, what is a medium? A medium is one like the Witch of Endor. She had a contact with familiar spirits. Remember, you've got to weigh and judge everything by Scripture. If the Scripture tells you something about it, then stick with the book. And then judge whatever, whatever contemporary thing is happening. What does the Bible say? All right. There are mediums. Because the Bible is clear about that. The Witch of Endor was and others. It talks about these things that go peep and squeak in the night. The book of Job has uh, somewhat to mention about these, going back 4,000 years ago almost. Been around a long time. Remember this, spirits don't age like you do. Spirits don't live like you do. A human being's life is in the nostrils, the breath that they're breathing. An angel is a being that was created and given life that is not like the life of a man. The life that you possess right now was given to you from God, directly from the Lord. In other words, it came from him into you. When God made an angel, there's no, no such thing said in Scripture about it coming from God into that angel. He simply created a being like Barah, Elohim, Hashamayim, Haaretz, when he made the earth. He brought it into being from nothing. He spoke it into existence. But man's life came directly from God. You follow me here now? That's a big deal. This is why man is said to be made in the image of God. So when you get into this thing, you start looking at it, you say to yourself, oh, there's something going on here that's very profound, and it is. Because here is an occultist, a woman, an occultist, who is having a profound effect upon a nation, upon, upon political leadership in that country. And this is undeniable. You can do the research on this, and you can go back and check into what I'm talking about, the Vril Society, Vrillians. And here's one of the things about them. These were women, about five or six to start with, apparently, who seemed to be high priestesses. These are women who wore long hair at that time. I'm talking about long hair. And, at, and the fashion of Germany back in those days was kind of bobbed off, short hair, similar to what the, most of the ladies wear today. 
And so they, could, they were easily recognizable by their long hair. They said that that long hair was a way for them to communicate and contact these vibrations, these spirits that were coming out from the extraterrestrials, from these above them. So let's keep something in mind. These Vrillians said, or the Vril Society said, there is an energy force. There is an energy that we can tap into. And if we merge that energy that we tap into along with mechanical construction or physical engineering, like an electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, the ones who, uh, an aeronautics engineer, if we can merge that spirit, that Vril energy, with the mechanical ability, we will be able to create a vessel that is far, far advanced to anything on this earth as man knows it. Now just digest that for a moment. Just think about what I just said. Digest that for a moment. Uh, this is some heavy-duty stuff. And I'm going to show you how it ties in in just a moment with some things that I've talked about in the past. <coughs> so it's important to understand. Probably... To me, the most compelling thing about an argument is the connections. If I see connections, especially from people who aren't connected themselves, but I see connections being made, that gets my attention. You follow me? Yeah. You see, you, you, you study historical incident that happened over here, something happened here. Then it's connection about the same chronology, about the same time period happened over here. And there's something about what happened here that's connected with what happened here. And they didn't know each other. That tells me that we don't have a common source of a, of a fake, a falsehood. That tells me there's something going on that's not connected. Where, where somebody sits down in a group and four, five, six, ten people sit down and say, All right, now let's create this hoax and let's push it on the people. That's what's important about this. So the Vril Society is a German secret society, and it was used to develop a groundbreaking energy force. Now, this is from altered dimensions. Now, folks, this does not mean at all that I endorse the website or everything that's found here. This is simply a point of reference. You can go get the same document that I've got in my hand right here. All you've got to do is go to this website, Altered Dimensions uh, .net. Now listen to this paragraph. They believed in a revolutionary alternative, a revolutionary new alternative energy source that would change the world forever. That short hair for women was atrocious. That a utopian new world order was also inevitable, and that they could channel communications from alien races located in star systems that were light years away, the Vril Society partnering with Nazis and assisted by the Virilinans alien race, allegedly succeeded in the development of a groundbreaking saucer-shaped transportation device is it myth, legend, or did the Vril Society really partner with alien races to develop radical new technologies that remain veiled from the world after the fall of the Nazis? Now let that uh, settle in for a moment. Notice the message. New world order. See? As it relates to the improvement of the races, because the races are not no longer bound with simple biological evolution. If there's a, something working on the races to elevate them and develop them to a higher plane, and that they partnered with the Nazis to develop a flying saucer. That's quite remarkable, don't you think? A fellow by the name of Arnold, his name was, uh, I've got his name, Kenneth Arnold, in 1947, he's a pilot, and he was an officer in the, in the military. Kenneth Arnold, 1947, was the first person in our modern era to talk about seeing a UFO. And what he described is what we're talking about here, a disc-shaped object, and the news media coined it a flying saucer. Okay? Now, this came from... Uh, this came from... Uh, 
uh, Kenneth Arnold, Admiral Richard Byrd. You remember Operation High Jump? All right, there's two operations to remember that are very important. Operation Paperclip and Operation High Jump. What is Operation Paperclip? Operation Paperclip is when they brought the brightest Nazi scientist into America to, to, to kickstart the rocket program. Werner von Braun was one of the brightest. Brought him in. All right, that's Operation Paperclip. This, of course, is right after World War II. They brought them into the States. Operation High Jump is when Admiral Richard Byrd took a force of thousands to the South Pole, ostensibly for a, a uh, you know, uh, call it anything you want to, <laughs> charting the seas or checking the mountains or whatever. But the truth of the matter is Richard Byrd was going to the South Pole because it was related as far as they, was con they were concerned with the Nazis and what might have been going on. In other words, I don't know how much that that we get today about how far advanced technologically the Nazis were. But folks, they were advanced. They were flying jet fighters in combat before World War II was over. The Nazis were. And they were working on all kinds of different technologies. Where did they get this stuff? You know. It's not that a German is intrinsically any smarter than an Englishman. Where do they get this stuff? Where's this coming from? What is the, what is the great over, overruling purpose in this? What is the real message behind what's going on here? What do you think the message is right now in America? When your democratic institution, what's that? Demo what is a democracy? A republic is a country governed by law. The United States of America is a democratic republic. What's democracy mean? It means the voice of the people. Democracy means the voice of the people. If the people speak in one voice, then that should be the law of the land, right? Now, democracy can be a bad thing because mob rule sometimes can be bad. But here's the point. Something is at work in this nation to tear it down and break it from its roots and redefine this country for what? For a new world order. That's what it's for. It's at work. You're only seeing the beginning of it. It's remarkable to me at how quickly this is accelerated. We don't get into specific arguments about this individual, that, and this individual. The point is this. America is changing before your very eyes. It's changing. What do I need to do to a country to prepare that country to receive the Antichrist? Well, if I take the country's foundation away from it, if I redefine it, if I, change, if, I, if I destroy the moral code of that country, if I take away from it its foundations, its moorings, and then I begin to transform it into a globalist community, that's what George Soros is trying to do. If I transfer the thinking of the people because that's the country. If I transfer their thinking, if, I, if I'm able to create a paradigm shift from the old way of thinking into a new way of thinking, then what have I done? I have created a globalist country where they want to be part of a new world order. And that new world order to these people is a utopia. It's a Shambhala. It's a Shangri-La. It's heaven on earth. It's man being able to re-engineer man through genetics and spiritual re-engineering. It's being able to re-engineer man and, and prepare him for this coming utopian age. This is what transhumanism is about. This is why I told you last week, they're working, and they're serious about this stuff, folks. No joke with, joke with these people. They are working to be able to take the intelligence, the personality of someone, and transfer it over into some other kind of entity, whether it be a computer entity or it be a robotic entity or whatever. In, but they're trying to take that 
that, in, that, that consciousness from that, being able to take that and transfer it over and then dupli replicate it. By replicating it, then they can make 15 or 20 or 100 of the same person. Therefore, if one of that, one of that person is destroyed, you still got 99. You know, the cat with nine lives. Amen. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that they believe that if they can do this, that they can give you eternal life. That there will never come a time when you don't have a conscious understanding of your existence. And they're doing it through artificial intelligence. They're doing it, doing it through DNA. They're doing it through all kinds of high-tech solutions for this. Some of them are psychic, all kinds of stuff. It's unbelievable of what's going on. It, it's, it's a whole database in itself when you start talking about transgen, uh, uh, transhumanism. You remember how I told you that transhumanism is the logical extension of transgenderism. Transgenderism is the confusion of, of male and female identity. When you go back and look at the old gods that came out of Sumeria and Babylon and all of that, you'll find out that many, many, many of them were androgynous. Plain words, they were both male and female. What's that mean? That means that they could reproduce themselves. They could. There was no need for a male and a female since this creature was both then it can reproduce itself. This is the spirit of this age. The spirit of this age is confounding male and female. And listen, it's progressed already to this point. They have fluid gender. Fluid gender means that I wake up in the morning, I'm a boy. This afternoon, I feel like a girl. Before I go to bed tonight, I'm a boy again. And maybe on my birthday, I decide to be a boy or a girl or what have you. It's all how you think in your mind. Because to them, the mind is everything. So, you know, here's the problem with something like that. Well, then how do you, how do you categorize them? How, do they, how are they responsible? Where do they, where do they give an account to? I mean, if you marry a woman and say, okay, I'll take you to be my lawfully wedded wife next week. Well, I'm a wife too. <laughs> so I'm not accountable to you anymore. And the American Psychiatric Association comes along and they support you in that. You have destroyed the foundations of your country. The foundation of a home is the male and female coming together as a husband and wife. It's what God said in his word. You can't improve upon that. You can sure tear it down. But that is fluid transgenderism. And these are all the preliminaries. This is only leading up to what's coming down the pike. It's real scary to me as to what you're going to see when you see what this is capable of producing. Admiral Richard Byrd said he saw flying saucers. He said he saw flying saucers moving thousands of miles per hour. That's nothing different from what, you, from what Arnold saw and what many others have seen. What did he see, preacher? He saw what Satan showed Christ. When he took him to the pinnacle of the temple and he showed him the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, did he or did he not? If you believe the Bible, you have to believe that. Now, you know, there's a lot of different takes you may have on that. You may interpret it a lot of different ways. But to me, Satan pulled back a curtain of time. And he showed the Lord Jesus Christ the progression of Gentile kingdoms all the way to where we are now, the end of the time of the Gentiles. He showed him all of that. He showed him the rise of kingdoms and the fall of kingdom. Did he show that to Daniel? Of course he did. Didn't Daniel prophesy of the kingdoms that were going to come? Of course he did. And so Satan shows him all of this. And nowhere in the Bible does it ever say that this was, that this was a hoax. It wasn't a hoax. It was genuine. You hear so little on that. It's, it's mind-boggling. What is it? Don't people believe that? You say, well, to believe that is to give Satan a lot of power. Satan's got a lot of power. He's got a whole lot. If you can show the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, what's that mean? Does that mean time travel is involved here? Boy, that opens up a new... That's, that's a mind bug. Time travel? Is it possible to travel in time? 
De Glocke. Did you ever heard of that? De Glock? Glock? I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly or not. Greek, Hebrew, and English, the only three I can handle, halfway any of them. <laughs> I get off in these other languages, and I'm not sure what I'm saying. But Glocke in German means bell. In other words, the bell. The bell was directly associated with Vril 7, the progressive development of the Vril flying saucer during the Nazi time in Germany. And they say that the bell was a time machine that could travel in time. Now, can it do that? I don't know. I don't know that. I don't know that. I don't know that anybody can travel in time but the Lord. He certainly can travel in time because he's God. He's not bound by time nor space. He's the Almighty. But the Germans were working on a ship that could move them in time. They were working on a space on a, on a flying saucer that could move thousands of miles an hour, could go straight up and go sideways, all this stuff. What we have is a physical reality with that. What a lot of people see is a spiritual, demonic manifestation of spacecraft and so forth and so on. And there's a difference between the two even though they are connected. A lot of what people have seen in UFOs, folks, it's real, but it's not physically real. It's demonic, but it is a reality. The, the spirit world, folks, is vastly superior to this physical world that we live in. Vastly superior. It's not bound by the laws that we are bound by in this body of flesh. So... In Germany in World War II, we got all these things happening, and you have to ask yourself this question. Why did that happen? And if it did happen, why did it fail? Or did it really fail? What's going on? Is there a deception being developed that's going to come down upon all mankind? A deception that they absolutely have never considered? A deception where the Bible says God will send them a strong delusion that they might believe a lie and be damned. That's what it says in 2 Thessalonians 2. If you're a Bible believer and you do any praying, you're going to have to look at this stuff that I'm talking about this morning. You have to say, well, it fits somewhere. You know, and we, we may not have the explanation for all of this. Just like the time machine, I'm not saying that happened. I'm not saying they could travel in time. But as far as the Vril is concerned, they've got photographs of that. They've got photographs of the disc. They, 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 they definitely developed a, a flying disc in Germany. They had technology that the rest of the world wanted. The, our fighters, World War II, our combat fighters, men that I have great respect for, would come back to base after a mission, and they would tell their commander, we ran into some fighters up there. We call them Foo Fighters. How many's ever heard of the Foo Fighter? We ran into fighters up there, and they're not like anything we've ever seen before. We've never seen anything like this before. And they would tell their commanders, it didn't happen one time. It happened a number of times by people totally unconnected to each other. You remember that principle I gave you? No connection. No collusion. You know, it just happened. And they report about it. And it happened within the same time span. Foo Fighters. Stuff happens, doesn't it? Amen. It certainly does. Richard Byrd said he flew over the North Pole. When he came back to the States, they gave him the Medal of Honor. Admiral Richard Byrd gave him the Medal of Honor along with his co-pilot. He said when he flew over the North Pole, he got to a place the ice and the snow began to separate and a beautiful valley opened up before him with mountains on one side, a river, lush green vegetation. And he said to himself, no way should I be seeing what I'm seeing. Not at the North Pole. No way. Yet he said, I could not deny that what I was looking at was real. Now, where does that come from? That comes from Admiral Richard Byrd's diary. Type that in. Do a Google search on it. Here's what you'll find. 
If you, do a, if you do a Google search on Admiral Richard Byrd's diary, you'll find this. You'll find two camps. One camp says it's a complete hoax. The other camp says it's real. It's genuine. And, you know, that's always the way it is. <laughs> with, most, with most anything that is highly controversial like that. Why is it highly controversial? Because Admiral Byrd was a, an accomplished pilot. You know, he was a military man. Been in there. He was flying this craft. And he said he got to the place where the compass started going completely wild. Completely wild. And he said he got to the place where something took control of his aircraft. How many of you have ever heard anybody who flew through the Bermuda, Bermuda Triangle say that their compass went completely wild? And something took hold of their aircraft. That's happened time and time and time and time and time. There's a connection there. There's a connection to the supernatural thing that happened to Richard Byrd and what's happening to people in the Bermuda Triangle. There's a connection. That's what this is about. This is how you do this stuff. You look for connections. You look for something that connects with the other thing of totally unconnected people. It happens. It happens all the time. You lose. He, he lost his compass. And back in those days, they didn't have GPS. When I learned to fly, we didn't have GPS. I learned to fly the old way by the seat of your pants. <laughs> that's what they called it. <laughs> Dead reckoning. <laughs> that's how, that's how I, I learned. <laughs> and I, but anyway, you know, that's the way they flew back then. And it was a big deal for, for your compass to start spinning and going wild and then something to take hold of your aircraft and begin to move you. And that's what happened to him. What's going on? What's happening? Is there something out there that God is holding back? He's holding it back until he just moves aside. And boy, when he does, it's going to come on the scene. It's going to come. This stuff happened. I believe Richard Byrd, when he led that, ex that, uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, what do you call it down there, to, uh, to the Antarctica high, high jump, when he led them down there, he said he saw flying saucers. He saw, he, he said they can fly from pole to pole with, with, to paraphrase him, with unbelievable strength, vastly to superior to ours. And he got this at the South Pole. Why did they go to the South Pole? They went to the South Pole to see if the Nazis had a camp down there, had something buried underground. Possibly even Hitler could be down there. And they're going down there, and they're going to find this technology, and they're going to find out what's going on. They're going to prove to themselves once and for all that what's happening down there is either real or it's a hoax. That's what happened to Byrd when he went to South America, went to uh, the South Pole, Antarctica. He went down there, and, uh, and, and he came back. James Forrestal, who was Secretary of Navy, Secretary of Defense, I forget what his, his office was, sent him. And when he reported back to him, apparently he had a lot of things to say to James Forrestal about what he'd seen in, in the Antarctica. And James Forrestal died a very mysterious death. Apparently somebody wanted to shut him up because he wound up going to Bethesda Naval Hospital and one night... James Forrestal jumped headlong straight through the window and I don't know how many stories down he went and, and killed himself. And, uh, and his family and people who've done any research into it believe to this day that he was murdered. And they believe he was murdered to shut him up. Uh, apparently what Admiral Byrd had told him, the powers that be did not want it to get out into the open what are you saying? I'm saying somebody's covering up something. They're covering it up. They're holding it, covered up. Uh, I forget it, well, who it was. I think it was Woodrow Wilson. I think I quoted it to you last week, week before. Woodrow Wilson, when he went in as president, he said, and I just have to paraphrase. I can't remember all the words, but the, the gist of what he said was this. He said, there is a power. There is a group that pulls the strings that is controlling this world that is above me Amen. and presidents come and presidents go but that crowd is still there how many of you heard the term deep state lately <laughs> well that's a, that's a new phrase i hadn't heard it too long what's that mean that means on both the republican and democrat party you have a surface that for the public to consume about what's going on inside the capital this and that's for the public consumption but the real strings of power are being pulled by people that you don't see 
and you don't know. That's the deep state. And when this man went in, when Donald Trump went in as president, he has begun to stir the deep state. And they want to get rid of him. Believe me, they won't shed of him. That's all I'm going to give you this morning. We'll get back into it next week because there's a whole lot more. There's a number of people have written books talking about what's going on underneath the ground, places like Area 51, where there's you're very limited as to your access to it. They're talking about this stuff that's going underground. They're talking about going down there, seeing people encased in, in, in stuff and, 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 and so-called aliens and all of this. It can get real wild, but the bottom line is there's a lot going on, no question about it. And I believe that, that the powers that be in this world are in collusion with the spirits. They call them whatever they want to. They are in collusion with them to bring about a one world government and they're gonna and they're gonna and they're gonna pull it on the people when the time comes. Yes, sir. Well, that's a... Well, here's the thing. I, I appreciate you saying that, brother. Any, you, you gotta watch symbols. Watch them. You can be very careful with this stuff. Very careful with symbols. The Nazis, of course, chose the swastika. That was theirs. The the Thule Society, a circle like this with a spinning swastika inside. And the swastika they did not invent. Swastika had been around, still around, for ages in all kinds of religions, but they adopted it. That's a symbol. you got to watch that stuff. That's, yes. That's another fad that's starting. They're, they're putting swastikas in rainbow collars, and they're, getting most, they're promoting most of the teenagers and the, the young people. They're bringing back the swastika. A swastika? What's that? The, the, the cross, the Nazi swastika. You mean swastika? Well, that's okay. I just, I wasn't sure you were bringing up something I'd never heard before. I just, okay, but that's. It's the Nazi symbol. Okay. Back for t-shirts. Okay. 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 All right. So what's the Thule Society? And what's the, uh, what's the Vril Society? And Dietrich Eckhart and all of that stuff. We'll get back into it next Sunday. Yes, sir. Now, say that again about the movie. Back to the Future. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. They are, they are wedded to numbers. Yeah, yeah, okay. Now, what you're talking about is Gamatria. Is this the, is this the uh, Greek language or the Hebrew? Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, Hay, Val. Teth, Yod, okay, that's the eighth letter, okay, 
it's gematria. They have a, they have a numerical value to them. And what's the number eight in scripture? What's that represent? New beginning, new beginning, new beginning. New beginning. You wouldn't believe this, but my license plate for my Ford, the first three, f first three numbers on it, eight, eight, eight. Amen, a woman looked at me one time a, a couple of years ago. She said, how did you get that? <laughs> she did. She sure did. How did you get that? Eight, eight, eight. <laughs> yes, sir. Pardon? Oh, the yo-yo. Is that what you're saying? The Odeo. Odeo? Yeah, that's what they call that. And what the alpha, alpha, beta. And so, all of the father is uh, alpha, beta, beta, alpha, which is house of the father, father of the house. That's okay. What, uh, okay, and that's Greek you're in now, alpha, beta, gamma, and so forth. Well, well, what's the other one? He Hebrew. Right, what was the second letter? Bait. All of okay. bait. Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Dalif. Yeah, I'm learning this stuff. It's pretty neat. Just uh, off of the load is father of the house, house of the father. Okay. Well, that's a different thing altogether. Get into these letters, man. You get into, uh, it's, it's amazing. Awesome. Okay, we'll have a word of prayer and let you go. We'll meet again next Sunday morning. And uh, brother, will you dismiss us, please?